I would approach Chinese friends and say, I'm studying slavery in China and the sale of people in China. And they would say, oh, there's no slavery. There was no slavery in China. Or slavery was something from a long, long time ago. Chinese friends said to me, there, was no, there is no historical slavery in China to speak of. And in the time that I have been looking at it, it's gone from being something that people denied to something that people acknowledge as a historical thing, not because of anything that's happening historically, but because in the Chinese press recently, there's been a lot of coverage of contemporary human trafficking. It's not a direct parallel with slavery as we know it in the West, or slavery as we know it certainly in the Atlantic trade, but even in terms of Roman slavery or Ottoman slavery. It's a much more embedded familial form, um, which flies in the face of all kinds of definitions of slavery, right? The idea that family is somehow something that is ruptured by slavery rather than a constitutive element of slavery. People were brought into households through a variety of mechanisms, usually using a matchmaker, often by purchase, and were not free in that in sort of a sense that we think of it today. Now, in China in this period, freedom didn't exist in the sense that we think of it today, so it's not quite the same as the slavery context that I've sort of drawn as a parallel or a non-parallel. But they existed as lesser members of a household, but still as members of the household. So unlike the plantation model in the American South, where you have people who are outside of a sense of claim on the resources of the household. In Chinese families, lesser members of the household were part of the family unit and could be lined up in a hierarchy of who was who in the family. So another thing that's interesting is employment and physician in the family intersect in the Chinese context as well. Typically, um, we think of matchmakers as arranging marriages. and. I was surprised in the archive to find matchmakers operating in all kinds of interesting ways. So not only facilitating the joining of two families through a felicitous match for their son and daughter, but also matching families with other services that they needed. So you might find a family needed a wet nurse for any number of reasons, perhaps the wife was unable to nurse herself, the wife did not want to nurse herself. The matchmakers could introduce people to other kinds of household domestic workers, like rickshaw pullers. Adopted children could be brought in by a matchmaker, and it's quite interesting. He or she is part of a spectrum of brokerage services. So we could see the matchmaker as the most benign end of a spectrum that begins with the matchmaker where people are relatively freely engaging someone to facilitate a mutually agreeable arrangement. And at the other end of the spectrum, there's the human trafficker, or, and perhaps even farther down the spectrum, the kidnapper or the slave broker. We want to think that it's exceptional to sell someone. And what I've found is that it's just one of many options that people had. It might be on the extreme end of the options, but there's a, I don't even want to say it's a slippery slope, but there's a, there's a gradation of duress that a family might experience that might bring them to consider this as a possibility. And I'm talking about the, the selling family, the, the family that decides for whatever reason, we can't handle this many people in our household. And it doesn't have to be that the wolf is at the door and we're starving. It can merely be, we see an opportunity. It looks better than our current circumstances.